awesome. It's just showing me a white screen. All right. Got to move from last episode to this episode. Okay. Full faith and credit. Okay. Those who doubt me suck cock by choice. <laughs> it did not say that. It did not say that. <laughs> did not say that to the show. Um, welcome to another episode of Anyways. Uh, we are discussing the television series Deadwood, and today we're discussing episode four of season three. And uh, uh, it was called Full Faith and Credit. And what did you guys think of Full Faith and Credit? Al thinks he's a whore. Al thinks he's a whore. Yes. What do you mean by that? Uh, because at the at the very end of the episode, he keeps comparing himself to what's her name? To uh, Dolly, the girl, yeah, the girl he's with. Yes, I think this is kind of what everything's been leading up to with him telling her this story of him and this orphanage stuff, and trying to get away to get to his mom on a boat. Yes, I think she just gave him up to the orphanage. He feels he feels like a whore. Um, there's uh. Doesn't he talk about how he feels like he's been held down and stuff? Yeah, yeah, and, all, and it's like the worst part is when they hold you down. Yes, that's what he says. And she says, "I don't like that part. I don't either. like that part either." And she repeats and they, it twice. Yes, and they start they they have a back and forth about it, and then he's like, oh, "Well, I don't hold you down though, right?" When I'm holding your head, and she's like, "No, it's not like that. Yeah. It is." But yeah, <laughs> but she, he says he says I do I do that to you when I pull your hair or mm-hmm. I grab your hair, and she's like. She very unconventionally says no. And he's like, bless you for a fibber. And then yes. we get, as you pointed out, we get like a, the, the patented, instead of cutting it black like they did in the awesome first season, they do a slow fade. What is that? Yeah, I don't know. It's like they fuck it up. They, they fuck new up editor. the end. Yeah. They got a new editor who he likes a slow half second I, I, I don't. I don't get it. <laughs> but Dolly has been there through all the blowjob monologues, and it's remarkable the for The mojo's gone. Yeah. And he's like, and he's trying to figure out, like, he's trying to deliver... You know the blowjob monologue like we've seen before, yeah. and he's just not feeling it. Yeah, and he's like, "No, no, something, something's wrong here." I was like, "I'm getting the blowjob. I should be getting the." It's the not mojo. the bandage. And it's not the angle that what's, she's using. What's going on? It's not on the here? time of day, as Lingrish suggested. I it's should probably be, the I fact that be, he feels unmanned by being. I should be delivering this amazing blowjob monologue right now, yeah. and I just can't do it. Instead, I feel like a whore. He keeps first. He last the second one. I think it's our only our third one this episode. But the second one, he like noticed that she dyed her hair. Yeah, and she like nodded yes. Yeah, and, and he like had identif- identified with her. Yeah. and wanted to talk to her. Yes, after treating her like a robot yes. or like a some type of sheep. Yeah. And, and it's remarkable. Like we talked about how Aunt Lou comes in and it has to be subservient to her last episode and then, and then she gets a note where she's like smart she's she knows how to act she's smarter than Hearst and she's talking to she gets to play Mejong. yeah but like with Dolly she's thoroughly dehumanized yes. for like three seasons up mm-hmm. until this point where like mm-hmm. she gets almost no notes she's like naked and miming sucking Ian McShane's uh, cock yep. for like the entire thing yes but this episode she finally gets a little bit of like okay, my name is Dolly, and I'm also a character in the show, <laughs> and I do things, and it's and it's but you know his monologues are so good, and then I don't know this her, I really like this moment. I think yeah. it's a really good moment because it's like uh, it, it, it's very specific about like you said, Swergen, the real life Swergen who like kidnap women, uh, basically kidnap women or trick them into working as sex workers. This yeah. Swergen goes to the orphanage, is including the orphanage where he was and and kidnaps them but he's really helping them yeah and you i think that's very insightful he you think he basically he thinks of himself as as a like robin hood type figure or something where he's 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 saving people from yeah from more awful monsters yeah. like this is, cy Tolliver or something yeah i'm not certain if the show ever says it but milch actually said something along these lines but in terms of you thinking of him as a whore i think that's really interesting because it's like He's talking about he's talking specifically about her cutting off his finger, yes. holding him down, and yes. Captain the Captain Turner holding him down. Yeah. But at the same time, she's comparing it to when people are raping her. Yeah. How they hold her down. Yes. And she, and he's basically and then she then they through her one phrase I you know I don't like it when they do that. Then he he has the empathy to be like oh I guess I do that to you. Yes. And um so it's like it's very dark. Mm-hmm. But it's also comical. I, I don't know. I mean, th- does that make sense, or do you? Is that no? Yeah. 
do you think it what do you think of the monologue what i mean was it too much <laughs> I, no, I don't think it was too much. I think it uh, illustrated perfectly like where his head is at and uh, how he's out of step at this point with Hearst being sort of the top dog and he, he's just whipped and, you know, I, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that Al again is like, by any standards other than this fictionalized version in the series, Terrible, terrible person. Do you know, do you know, what, I oh, yeah. do you know what I think is interesting that I finally think I've picked up on in this episode is that, like, I think one of the reasons you're supposed to like Al mm-hmm. is because he's like, okay, what's what's something that Democrats and Republicans can both kind of agree on? It's like small business owners. Yes. It's <laughs> like, those are the guys who we should be, you know, marketing ourselves to or whatever. It's like, and Al finally comes across as like, what well, maybe not finally, but like, I think this is just the moment that I realized it where it was like, he's supposed to be the small business owner that you're, that you're, that you're rooting yeah, for. Yeah. And here comes the corporation is the, even though he's a horrible monster and he's like, and he guts he's, people. He's got and, empathy now. Yes. He, he, he is officially had a mon- blow job monologue and it's not about himself. <laughs> it's about him. I mean, it's like her, him realizing that in he, fact, him, him realizing that he's basically giving the blow job to Hearst. Yeah, but also that Dolly is not only a human, but she's a fucking good match. Is that is that she's whoa, whoa, a really whoa. good match for him? Was this he needs somebody not like Trixie, but like somebody like Dolly? Last episode, she and she loves him. Apparently, last episode was the thing where at the end of it, um, who's the thespian guy? Jacqueline Grish. Jacqueline Grish. I don't know how to pronounce it. They say in the show, Langrish. Lang- yeah, Landrish. It sounds like Langrish. You guys point out they make they make a. He says something about being homosexual or something at the end of the episode. Well, he, he, he thinks that he might be because he he feels that he has uh, taken it up the a, ass by Hearst over, or yeah, something. And using Al's Not symbology, totally. yeah, at, because he's such he's so uh, passive to Hearst. And then I think kind of like when Grish makes it literal by patting him on the ass right. at the end of the scene. Right. Um, fuck, I forgot where I was going with that. But oh, I mean, basically the the idea of him feeling like he's sucking her cock or something. You know, yeah. it's like he is... Yeah. He's the Everything's whore sexual in this situation. For, sexual well, or violent for him. Exactly. Everything's in sexual exactly. or violent and terms. That, and that's how he relates to yeah. everything in his life. Yeah. And so it's like, yeah, and so he feels like he's a passive one in a relationship. And what's being what he usually does to others is being done to him. Yes. In terms of, like, the metaphorical, penetrative, violent act yes. of being yeah. stabbed. Um, but it's like he's... To go back really quickly before we move on to Dolly, Dolly also says in this episode, he asked her earlier in the episode, what, uh, who are you voting for? Yes. And, and she says, uh, you know, star for uh, mayor and uh, Harry Manning for sheriff. And he's like, no, 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 you got to vote my ticket. My ticket is Bullock, Bullock for sheriff. And she's, she's like, I don't like it when he, he yells he, at you. He yells at you, though. Yeah. And then it's like, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. <laughs> I don't get it. Yeah, exactly. And she and and the only reason she says that is she's like she again but, probably unhealthily she has Stockholm syndrome. She really right. likes him. She thinks he's a fucking great guy. But also like why would you know any different? Mm-hmm. You know, it's like it's like all you see is, is this guy comes in and yells at your boss yeah. and yeah. then leaves. So you would think, oh, the thing that he wants is the guy that doesn't that's yell true. at him and, and they think the guy that's nice. Yeah. It's like so that makes the most sense. Yeah. But. And then um, she could be putting on a front as well, but they, no, she seems. I, I don't think. I don't, so. I don't think she is. Yeah. Um, that the actress's name is Ashley Kaiser. I think this is like maybe the only thing that she's really ever been in. Hmm. But she has a role throughout all three seasons, and it's just this kind of horrible role. <laughs> but it's like also some of the best soliloquies on modern television. Yeah, yeah. She's a part of them. So is there? Or not? So solilo- see, it's horrible to say a soliloquy. She's she's there. Blowjob soliloquy. Yeah. I assume maybe someone in in all the commentary that's been you know had about Deadwood has maybe made the sort of parallel between Al getting his finger chopped off and being a kind of like symbolic emasculation. Yeah, yeah. even like sure. he even I, I, th- I think it was in this episode made some kind of comment about his digit. 
Yeah. Yeah. He well, did say something about it. It's a constant. Well, we this was comes on later in the series, but he talks about uh, it's throbbing. Yeah. Like yeah. Uh, Lingrish is like, is it still throbbing as badly as it, as it was? And he's like, he, he he like he unveils the fact that it's been cut off and he's lost the finger first to Lingrish. Is there something going on between? I'm thinking out loud. Is there something going on between what's going on with Al and uh, what I'm going to dub uh, Con Stapleton? Getting his groove back, or getting his groove for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> How Con Stapleton got his groove back? Yeah, this is the original title yeah, of this episode. Yeah, because like you know, he's uh, even with a hernia and stuff, he's able to uh, have sex with this lady. Well, and like she's, oh, I, 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 you know, obviously she has other, some other ulterior motive going has, on here. She of wants course. to walk past Brian Cox or Jack Lagrish in the hallway. It looks like at is the end of it, she. Oh. At the end of it, she walks. She walks right past him, and, and he. She's she does. Like, and there's this great shot of Con Stapleton that's like three seconds long of his eye in the doorway, and him being like, and then the door shuts. Well, she she's picked up Con Stapleton, who is our resident goofy oh, buffalo buffoon. looking guy. When I when I, th- I I don't hear the words that come out of his mouth. I just hear him go. <laughs> That's, that's it. That's what he sounds like. <laughs> and <laughs> pulling at his collar. And she walks into the saloon, and they both keep throwing into windows at each other, and they're instantly almost in heat. You yeah, know, stuff like, about dice and dice and yeah, bones, and bones yeah, sucking ever, on bones. You, you ever thrown the bones before? It's like I caught a few. I caught a few. Yeah. Oh God. And and then oh. we see her like sitting after they do it. And she just looks like, oh my god! And he's telling a story about how Leon, Leon was talking about. He her, has nothing her else. He has nothing else to talk about. And she's just like, looks so dissatisfied. And he's like, we can do this in a few days. <laughs> you can put a buck on them on the shelf, or whatever. I'm talking about her breasts or something. Yeah. It's like, god damn it! But I think oh, his um, porch. his hernia. <laughs> That's what it was. His hernia is so bad that he can't. He, he's going to have to wait a few days. Yes. So they can do it again. Wait a few in a few days. And she looks so. Unexcited about that poise oh, code. Yeah, she looks and then sad. she gets up, closes the door, goes outside, walks past Brian Cox, who's like who's right opposite him. Yeah. And so maybe she's seen uh Con Stapleton in the hallway, but she's uh-huh. like she has a one she's like he's like, This is not your room and she's like, Oh my, my my room's down the hallway. And so I mean that I'm not I don't I this is not the plot point that the rest of the season revolves around. <laughs> I'm sorry to say, but I, I'm not, I don't, I don't, I'm not going to say what happens according to my memory. Um, I don't, that's, that's not according to my memory, but that's just my guess is like, that makes sense as an explanation for why she slept with Constapleton mm-hmm. or why she, maybe she just really likes Constapleton. Maybe it's just like, I don't think she does. I don't think anybody really likes Constapleton except for Leon because he's doped up all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Because they're just, they're just partners. They're in, both just in fucking incompetence. partners in losery. What, what did you guys think of Leon in this episode? We saw him go to the bank and he, well, yeah. what is he tipping his hat what's to going, fucking Alma and what's stuff? What's happening? I, well, what would connect, been... what would connect Leon and Alma? What do they have in common? Yeah, they have that in common. Oh, God shit. Oh, <laughs> fuck. They're getting fucking high together. Ah, uh, shit. Yeah. But anyway, he also <laughs> he also opens an account at the bank. Yes. We don't know. We just He does all this shady stuff. Sure. He's, like, hanging around the bank, staring at Alma, and you're just like... I mean, know, there's no other reason that they would be, like, so chummy as they are. But they're hanging around the bank, and they're, you know... Leon, he, he just volunteers information for no fucking reason. I'll open an account here. Well, I think he said that to Bullock because Bullock was charging towards him. He's like, "Ah, Bullock, uh, yeah, I'm opening an account. I'm not hitting on your ex girlfriend." Oh yeah, okay, that makes sense. But like, he he also just after that, he's just like, straightened his hat in the thoroughfare in the, in the bank lobby, oh. and it's just like, I mean, you know, he could have other purposes. I'm not. I, I just, so Psy is getting Leon. Well, never mind. Never mind. I'm I mean, just mind. speculate. No, I don't no, know. No, it's a, it's all right. Well, I mean, I think I think I pretty much said everything that I was going to say okay. by just saying those few words. Who? I have I missed something. Has there been an explanation as to who this like mysterious lady in red is? No. Okay, because at first I thought she was with the acting troupe. Lady, she's a, she's lady a, in a, red? A, the lady in red who who she noticed can't. that E.B. Farnham was quoting Wordsworth, and we learned that Farnham just memorizes 
uh, oh, digestive, yeah. and then yeah. suppresses the author's names. Oh yeah. So he's just quoting Wordsworth, but he doesn't know it. She comes on one of the wagons. That's like, right. When uh, you know, uh, when Brian Cox and when I just assumed she was on one of the, the theater troupe people or that's something. That's what I thought. At but first, she doesn't but know she's them. Never, she's never. I mean, the tables. That's with, right. Like, yeah. Or talks to any of them. Like then, then I never they talk about. about it. No, Aunt Lou talked about her, how she likes to draw before she gets her meal. But the right. theater troupe did not talk about her, did they? No. I guess they didn't. No, um, I don't think so. No, I but I mean, just because she says something about drawing, it doesn't mean anything either. She I, just noticed her at the table. Right. I had assumed last episode she was just with the troupe, but yeah. then this episode huh. it just seems like there's no connection whatsoever, and it's. She's very mysterious well, to me. Well, I'm, I'm going to do what I didn't do before and and not talk about the future. Ah, but what no. do you what do you guys what do you guys think she might be? She draws. She's she's uh, she's a pretty lady. She she uh, knows Wordsworth. She knows Wordsworth. She's lettered. I uh, I I hadn't the slightest idea. I don't know. And I, I want to say stuff about things, but I, I guess I shouldn't. I'm going to make. Has a, there been some kind? I'm of... going to make a wild accusation right now. Yeah, sure, go. I'm going to make a wild fucking accusation. Okay. There was originally a school teacher that was supposed to come to town. Mm-hmm. Okay. She yeah. fled in terror. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> then suddenly there was no other school teacher. Yeah. Maybe yeah. this is supposed to be some sort of replacement school teacher. But we know Miss Martha Bullock's doing a great No, job. I know. But, yeah. but why would anyone else know that? Uh, and that, And that would be a reason to, again, this is all wild speculation. Uh, but that would be a reason to then suddenly have Martha something for her fucking character to do because mm. she has literally nothing to do right now except ask so, people if they want strawberries. Yeah, and yeah. teach children. Yeah. Well, okay, so I feel like I, I did said too much and even talking about what Leon and Alma have in common, so maybe I should not say No, no, don't say again. anything else. Okay. Don't say anything else. Well, I'll just ask this, and I, I think uh, your answer probably wouldn't be too revealing. Mm. Has there been some kind of... Uh, Build up. Has there been something that would clue us in in any kind of way? So God damn it, no. There's no? So, zero, <laughs> zero, so little build up with that red the lady. Red lady. Yeah. So, and I feel I'm misleading you just by talking. So, about so, it. so you're telling, so, so you're just, telling just, me, you're telling me, me sad. you're telling me that it's like Miss Isringhausen all over again, where all of a sudden <laughs> no. there's just a there's just a new character. I and, can't, then, and then stuff happens off screen, and then we're just supposed to just suddenly be like, oh, okay. I guess, I guess I'm bound by the spoiler etiquette, but I want... If Jordan was here, who has also seen season three, yeah. I would look to him for a ruling, because yep. I feel like to not withhold is to torture. Mm, but, no, no, we'll... But to, with, to inform is to... We can't go there. Just just be just so... Just don't do it. Just don't do it. Fuck it. It's Fuck just it. like... It, it's. You're gonna be unhappy either way. I didn't. I didn't hear anything about what you were talking about. Yeah. So, uh, she, she's the high priestess of the Lord of Light. Yeah, she's know, she's a uh, something about dragons and Game of Thrones. Yeah, um, so she's the Lord of Light. Uh, That's a very good. <laughs> yes. Um, I'm just guessing you were talking about Game of Thrones. Yeah, we were talking about Melisandre. Um, <laughs> Game of Thrones. <laughs> so, um, we got a lot to cover in this episode. Oh, do God. we? Yeah, I mean, uh, there's a lot. Okay, so did uh, you guys? I, I thought there was I'm a lot going kidding. on. I'm, I'm just kidding. It was more with the when the theater people, the the mm-hmm. older women, it's like all of a sudden you felt, I'm like, wait, are we watching like a period piece? Yeah, we're watching a period piece. Lots a of bit. stuffy women talking about letters. A little bit. But what were you saying? Oh, I don't know. The bank uh, in loan, Deadwood Bank in loan, opens with uh, Mrs. Uh, Ellsworth, uh, oh you know, loaning. Uh, and uh, it was a ridiculous sight to see her sitting at a desk. Yeah, and yeah. then I was like, oh, they're not gonna. I thought they were just keeping the safe in that building for like right now. Mm. I didn't know it was literally going to be in the same building as the hardware store. Yeah, but you know their post office is also in their jail, as you guys pointed yeah. out this episode. Is there? It's, you know these are well, city centers. I mean, I, I mean, I've, sure. I've, yeah. I mean, like we we pointed that out in multiple episodes, and I think and I do think it's funny that people put themselves in jail yeah, when they're Joni talking Stubbs about things this and, yeah, in this episode. She walks she into to talk to Charlie Utter, but there's no place to sit down except for inside a prison cell. Bullock has done it before, too, when he feels like he's in the wrong. He goes and sits in the jail cell and talks to Charlie Utter. Charlie Apparently Utter there's has no become, other place to sit. Yeah, well, but, you know, obviously, they're, they're, yeah, it's yeah. a very obvious, like, metaphor for what's going on. Yeah. Um, uh, we, oh, but, uh, but, so the bank stuff is going on in this episode. There's... The, Amazing part where Ellsworth has to stand up for Alma. Oh, and the guy she's talking to is the same guy who was in the horse meat march 
who, when General that, Crook came to him, murmuring, muttering. To he was the guy who had like a scar on his head. He was going like, "I ate my That's horse." The guy. Yeah, he he's, he, he yeah. deserted the wow. Union Army and right. he settled down in Deadwood. Well, now I feel bad. Why? He's, Think, he's, thinking that he was a dickhead. He, he was. was. He's no, a, he no, he was a dickhead. He's but he's a also got, terrible guy. But he's also got shit wrong with him. Yeah, yeah I guess so. But he looks pretty normal. He's also. I, I mean. I don't know. I didn't he? I mean, he participated I mean, in a slaughter, basically. No, but yeah, but he also, but also, like they had obviously like operated on his brain. Had they? Did they? He had a really it? nasty looking stitch up at the up in the it's frontal looked, lobe. It looked, it looked like something had happened to and his he kept brain. Weirdly and itching. He, yeah. And he, as he was like, he, he talked about killing your minions or whatever he was doing. <laughs> he was like, he was just being like really transparent. He about said what was like, happening. paid them. Had forced me to eat my mare, paid them back, man, woman, and child, for having to eat my ma- mare. Yeah, yeah. And then, yeah, you know. killed them all. Yeah. And then <laughs> late, earlier in the season, we saw him yell at uh, during one of the electoral speeches about people shitting in the creek. <laughs> and they needed to address that. That's right. And see, That's so right. like now I f- feel bad about passing judgment. On well, let's pass guy. judgment. What let's do you what What do you think of him in this scene? Well, he was a piece of shit in this scene. Yeah, and he was <laughs> he's getting really mad at Trixie, and Trixie was getting really mad back at him. And then well, he, but she's. <laughs> She does. She does that for no reason at all. She was, just calls people he, fucker and a cocksucker for no fucking reason. He was trying to open an account in, in Mrs. Ellsworth, Mrs. Almo, and he Ellsworth, was like, New "Can Bank. I get it day or night?" And it's like, "Well, if you find where I fucking live and come stand outside my fucking house." He doesn't and, understand the concept of a bank, which yes. might have hours where right. which, during which you can withdraw money. Right. And he gets angry about that. And he doesn't back down for Trixie at all. And he's yeah. just as nasty as she is. And then. Ellsworth comes over and he's kind of backs down a little bit because Ellsworth's getting really mad. But then he softens for Alma. Yeah, I think really. And it's like Alma's a fancy lady, mm-hmm. <laughs> and so therefore he can't get mad in front of her. Mm-hmm. Well, I think also Ellsworth kind of. Um, we killed a fly. Weathered weathered him down a bit by being so Ellsworthy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, we were and then just, you hit we, him with the Alma. We were just talking last episode about how Ellsworth doesn't seem very Ellsworthy mm-hmm. in that last episode. And then in this episode, you know, it's like... His temper's... It's like flattered, flattered and hammered shit all over again. Yeah. You know, it's like he's he's he lays into the fucking guy and then it's basically like, and by the way, here's my wife. And then yeah. and then <laughs> she's like, mm. and then he goes, oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, yeah, sure. I'll do it. It's yeah. fine. Sorry. I guess I'll put my coin in this. Like, you get this... The, you get the and sense this like little piggy bank. The, the town is backward, but also these places are community centers, and also they have to deal with a lot of ornery people. So it's like, mm-hmm. like they kind of are like, oh, they don't you, understand how things work. Yeah, you just yelled at us in our bank, but that's okay. Please open an account. And well, because they're desperate, we'll take anybody. I don't. I think it's just a hobby for Mrs. Ellsworth. She's just like, hey, this is gonna be fun. I'll do this. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I think that's part of it, but also it's like. I mean, you want people to fucking yeah, yeah, come yeah. to your bank. That's I mean, true. like you know, it's that's it's like the uh, it's the first rule of customer service that um, Bullock doesn't understand, but that Star does. Yeah. yeah, and it's the same thing with Trixie. Trixie doesn't get it, which is really funny that she's like the face of this fucking <laughs> bank, and it's yeah, like the one her. the one who's like a fucking asshole to everybody. Yeah, she didn't get to do much this episode, did she? Uh, Trixie didn't. Um, Mm. What about we saw a little bit of Jane, a little bit of Jane. She got the telegram. By Not the way, much. was this a goof uh, on on behalf of the Deadwood writers, or was this like in some way uh, explained in the plot or in the dialogue that she gets a telegram, which is instantaneous, pretty much. I mean, it, she also draws a gun on Blazanov, the the messenger, and he says, "I'm the messenger." That's a little. <laughs> Pretty, it's pretty literal. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't don't kill me. I am the messenger. I am it's the like, messenger. Yeah, you know, it's like yeah. Well, don't shoot the messenger. I, I get it. <laughs> yeah. That that old saw. Uh, but like, okay, so she gets a telegram from uh, the general mm-hmm. uh, from Fields um, mm-hmm. about that they're coming back and not camp. Steve the drunk. No, Fields. Not that Fields. Mm-hmm. Um, Samuel Fields, right? Yes, the okay. general. The general. The general Fields. Yes. So. She Blazanov gives her the telegram uh, from Fields, which, which uh, telegrams it just goes right across the wire. I think wire. Blazanov has been out of town. I think that's so what you it think was. He was. It was an older. Oh, message. it was like a back backlog. Backlog. Of or else, it's, who receives the message though? If he's not operating, nobody, because nobody. Obviously, nobody knows how else to do it. Because the only other person that would know how to do it 
conceivably would be Merrick. But he doesn't. But he has no idea he, what the he hell he's talking about. I mean, like, was that last episode? I think last episode he he tried he was, to explain it to him, and there was yeah. this comical thing where he falls off wanting to talk low. <laughs> it's like he's like, you talk low, and I'll talk high. Right. And he was like. Uh huh. Uh huh. I don't know what you're talking about. And also, we learned that Blazov got a girlfriend in Chicago. Yes. Um. Yeah. We, sorry, we forgot to talk about that. Then he but, yeah. With yep. All you Blazanov fans. Damn it! I forgot about that. I was gonna say something about the fucking ambulators are we back. Forgot oh yeah. To mention that like Doc is dying. Oh gosh. Last episode, didn't we? Oh, that was kind of minor though. In a in a weird well, way. In a weird way, it was minor. minor. He's thing. been coughing. He has been coughing. And they've amplified that cough. We yes. saw last episode, which we didn't mention, was the. Bl- <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fucking just lung. What do they call him? A lunger? They call him a lunger. That's all In they say. This episode? They call this him a lunger. Episode, I think they call him both. Yeah, it's, it's now like Cy noticed it. Al has noticed it. Dan, Dan got told about it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he's one of our favorite characters, so it is interesting that it's just so quick. Mm-hmm. That we like, we're just like, oh, yeah. Doc's it's, coughing up it, blood. It's like, it's like the F plot line mm-hmm. for the episode yeah. so like it's it's hard to remember it's and stuff like that, that. Yeah. so so real quick are we are we gonna like uh are, is our verdict about the telegram is that a goof uh i would say i would say it's probably a goof but you could explain it away by just saying a blaznov has been out of town he he's been out of town there's been some thing that's exactly what i was gonna say or you know but the the how the receiving <laughs> the message you need an operator. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know. I think we're getting, I, I'm getting us stuck on this. It's okay, but I mean, either, e- either that or, um, and I'm going to keep us stuck on it for a second. Yeah. But it's like, but it's like maybe every day they come back and they're like, nobody responded. Uh, and they resend messages sure. once yeah. a day or something. I think I don't it would know. help us all if we had a rudimentary understanding of how telegraphs work. Um, yeah, I don't have to because I have a fucking telephone, <laughs> yeah, so yeah. it's it's fine. We well, don't even use it. I there's mean, no yeah. reason. Yeah, I don't, I don't call anybody don't from it. It's like I don't I don't you know. And again, somewhere around this time, like even earlier than is in the like Deadwood was one of the first cities in that portion of the country to ever have a telephone. Mm. Like they made a point of putting a telephone in Deadwood. So so the, again, uh, on the side of it being a goof, like if it, wherever that message was sent, it would have been a bit of a ways out. I guess. More than likely. Yeah. I guess. I g- hmm. Yeah. Um. I, I'd say that I have a tendency to lionize the show. The show is sure. the greatest. It's, it's like, the no, best. Yeah. But it's it, not a goof. We just didn't. We're too dumb. Yeah. To, yeah. To, no. 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 I, no. I think <laughs> it, it, it. A lot of times it might be a goof, but you're right. just like, oh, this language is so great. Oh, sure. it's it's knocking me over. And it's just like they're like, oh, we just come up with some new plots. Here's some new. Get your new plots. And it's just ben, like. Ben, can I can I can I propose a drinking game? Sure. To this show. Okay, and that one of the things would be, and I don't want you to stop doing this. Okay, but I don't know what it is. But that every time you have a a Deadwood factoid, mm-hmm. that's a time to drink. Oh sure, yeah. <laughs> I mean that's like the fourth time we've talked about the phone, but that's fine. I don't care. Uh, that's fine. Specifically the phone. <laughs> every time specifically I mention the phone. the phone. Yeah, but um, yeah. Well, the, the, so that's the, yeah. that that's that's the first thing. You it's anyways, fans. When, whenever, whenever you hear Ben give a factoid, it's yeah. time to drink. Yeah, shout out to I, all the people watching. I would say every perambulators. I, I, yeah, I would say every time I laugh, but then you would be dead. Thank you to Jacques and Chris, who I know have been watching uh, this show. Thank you. Um, but what, what were you going to say? Oh, I, I was going to say that the the, the Telegraph um, goof is uh, show breaking to me. I, yeah. I yeah. Be continuing. <laughs> Yeah. This series. Yeah. There's no I, point. I There's no point anymore. Yeah. Further. There's no point anymore. Uh, yeah. But they, they bring the horse back. They bring the horse. Uh, Ho- Hofstetter and uh, General Fields, who were trying to castrate this horse where the moon was full. They were trying to nut him. They were trying to nut him, and he ran and killed Bullock's son, and they ran away because they were, had General Fields had just recently been almost lynched Jordan in the fucking town for the crime him. of being black in yep. the 1800s. And so they've come back to their livery, to Hofstetter's livery, and and it is not the the most. We've they've had a conversation about how Hofstetter just kind of doesn't want, he doesn't want uh, to let anyone kill him or have control over him. He'd rather shoot himself first. Mm-hmm. And General Fields is like, uh, you know, we what if we went back and we took, you know, they didn't know the boy was dead either. No, they didn't know. I knew he was hurt. And, and they've been gone a long fucking time. And six. 
It says like six weeks. That's how long Steve the fucking drunk or something has been. Steve has been watching after the liver. And he has Mis- a badass apron. Mr. the oh, drunk. Nice. Yeah. Mr. the drunk has Mr. been drunk. Uh, watching the livery for, I think, it, four to six weeks. I can't remember. Yeah. Um, He's another one whose voice is just like. Rrr, 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 yeah. It goes into a low rumbly register yeah. for sure. But I I love that, yeah, like that. part of it. But. He's super racist. He is the extreme so racist language, which makes the show like a, so not a show you can incredibly racist. Like it's not a family friendly show. No, it's an incredibly no, cringeworthy I show. Say so. A lot of it you can be owed to Steve Drunk's racism, which is just like, like I would say that's like nine percent of it. Okay, at well the yeah, most. yeah, yeah. I mean, sure, but Steve Drunk, but pretty he's, racist. He's <laughs> I mean, nine percent is a very high percentage, but um, yeah. for this show, but um. Yeah. But he yeah, goes on st- long rants. He's a Steve, racist Steve, that stands out this is, in this a racist is, world. This is the racist. worst racist rant yeah. he's gone on, and he's the most racist person in the show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And this is the worst fucking he's racist He's very explicit he about on. his grievances. Like, he thinks that all black people are going to hurt all white people, mm-hmm. and specifically him. I think... But and see, it's very but strange. See, I, think, I think that's what it is, is he keeps... He keeps equating it to himself, and then he tries to externalize it when he realizes that, like, everybody's listening to him and stuff. And he's like, but they're coming, you know, they're coming after you, too, and blah, 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 or whatever. And to, and to, 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 to try to reinforce his racism and make it make sense. But it all stems from whatever stupid thing happened in he his He lost past. his confectionary when he got drafted. That's right. <laughs> Oh, right. okay. I forgot Stole about his that. look at riches. I That's what he says that. is he's putting the pitch on a thing to burn a uh, field his shoulder mm-hmm. after he stripped his clothes Wow, off. I totally forgot about that. Um, but it's like it's like we had to read the script because it's, he says it and it just sounds like it, it sounds times, yeah, like, yeah. It sounds like just you can't tell what the hell he's saying. But all <laughs> all his friends have gone like uh, the guy played by Cade Carradine, all these people like he's just a dude in a bar yelling and yeah. the only person who knows to like to take him seriously as somebody who might get people riled up and get people killed is Tom Nuttall, who just immediately goes and he's like, Harry Manning, go stand over there. Yep. I'm going to get a gun, and he cocks it. and Puts it, the puts it underneath the bar. Ready for trouble. But Steve, is, go ahead. Two episodes in a row where uh, somebody's been told to go to the other side of the bar. Last episode, Al told... Uh, that was last episode, right, where he told uh, whoever the fuck that guy is. Davey. Davey. The guy who fell asleep and Al threatened to right. gut him. Oh, yeah. He told him to go to basically like the weird second satellite bar that we haven't really I, known about. I'm not. Yeah, no, I'm there sure. was like other bottles over there, and there I was like a, just we- like a there was like yeah. a weird side table oh. that was over there. Yeah. So uh, anyway, Al's been but, doing a lot of stuff that emphasizes like his weak side. Exactly. And, like, and, like, and, he, and he's and like he's Davey like I'm, like I'm capable. I'm yeah. capable. Yeah. But uh, but Tom, uh, does I I, I thought maybe they were gonna do a little bit more with Tom and I thought maybe he was going to he cocked the gun and just watched I thought maybe he was going to shoot Steve yeah in this episode it would have been better for us all because I thought maybe that's that was going to be kind of like his making himself feel better about Bullock's son dying or something was like oh well you know I'll do the right thing here I'll and put like my, I put down my dog. Keep yeah, keep fucking <laughs> Steve the dog drunk from I think that would be killing. like a, a modern sympathetic character reaction sure. to Steve. Exactly, exactly. And like and for that's, everybody's and that's just like, long. Oh, this is just Steve. And that's, you know, it's yeah. not Steve the racist, it's Steve the drunk. But he's right. like I, I wish I need to pull up some of Steve's speeches, but they're like I'm I'm not gonna fucking read them. <laughs> but like they're they're like <laughs> it, yeah. they're so they're so right in terms of the character psychology of yeah. his obsession with the idea that anything that Hofstetter does is, is out to get to Steve. Yep. And then anything that is in his favor, like there's a comical bits where at the end of the scene he'll be like, oh, ain't that a beaut that uh, I'm gonna, I might get a livery out of this. I'm going to get a livery out of this for throwing a fit and basically like uh, getting to the point where I wanted to get a black man hung for yeah. killing your child. He looked fairly surprised that it went that way. He yes, like, because uh, because he's a he's a uh, he's a he's not a nihilist, but he's definitely very negative. No, he he was probably I th- he was pushing things. He he was he was gonna push things over a cliff. Sure, he had his druthers. I sure. Think. Uh, so like uh, he was 
fairly surprised that like he's he, he, they he, didn't boil over and actually worked in his favor. Yeah, he's a definite pessimist and and was thinking that yeah things were going to go badly no matter what and that if it came down to it he was just going to end up killing some black people and that Ooh, would make him feel dying. better. And yeah, it's like it's like well at least I'll have done my duty or something. You the know, mo- it's like the most absurd thing is. One, first we see him, he's feeding the horse when, before Hofstetter and Steve get to delivery. Right. He's like, you, you think just because I have a peppermint in my hand that you deserve it. He's like, he's just, he's in love with this horse right. that he originally ejaculated on. Yes. And then That's true. He, right. he, he, he didn't fuck it, apparently. Although feels, I kind of want to say that he fucked it. He's so aggrieved yes. that he's like, Hofstetter's stealing my livery. He's only had it for this time while Hofstetter was he's running. He's had it for, for a month. Yeah, run, Hofstetter's running for his life. He's had it, it for a month while Hofstetter was looking for the horse that killed a child. Bullock's son mm-hmm. that he was basically trying to deliver back to him in a way of like... Well, that's their cover story. They're really running for their lives. They're, then they came up with that story once they got out of camp. Well, no, I know. Yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, no, 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 I know. But, like, but, but, but also he comes back to accept whatever yeah. punishment is going to be given to and him. Does so, even yes. though it's not his fucking fault. Yeah. In any way, shape, or form, and it's a very touching moment where he apologizes to Bullock. I yeah, think he does but, it, but it's very but, honorable. But does not back down. Yeah, which I think is appropriate for yeah. the situation because it really isn't his fault, and it's like it's big of him to even offer any of this. Yeah, at all because he could have just fucking left. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, I really like the moment where he just says, you know, like, uh, you know, I, I'm answerable for what happened to your boy, and then right. then he learns that the boy has died. Yeah, and then he just. He's he, angry. He's, he's angry about it. Yeah, he's very prim and proper. Yeah. Like, uh, the General Fields is just, like, kind of just, like, this very... General Fields, like, the actor is actually a stand-up comedian that mm. I used to see on Comedy Central when I was little. Yeah. And he's, like... And he had, like, these huge glasses, and he would tell these dirty jokes. And he's great as, as General Fields, but, like, his character is not prim and proper. Yeah. And he's, like... And it's just, like, they're kind of, like, mismatch buddy comedy pair. Mm-hmm. Sure. And But, um... I, I, I feel really like there's so much honor in how Hofstetter goes back and says, oh, yeah, we accidentally got your kid killed and we're willing to take whatever that is yeah. you know, as far as that goes. Well, he says, like, I'm willing to take it. Yeah. Like, he keeps telling him, like, shut oh, the fuck true. up. Yeah. It's like, I'm willing to take anything. Yeah. And then it's like, and then Steve, like a remora or a parasite, he just, he's like, he, he feels like the right thing to do is offer. He's, he sees like Steve looks like not a drunk and he has an apron and he's taking care of horses. It's like, it actually is a good influence. Yes. Delivery. So he's like, I'm willing to take you on. Yeah. And then Steve goes on this, this rant, it's, which it, again is extremely by modern standards, like beyond the pale. But and it's, then, but it's, but it's like, it's like Steve, the drunk when he was, uh, being friends with, uh, William Bullock. Yeah. That's kind of like the same clear headed. Yeah. Steve. Yeah. That we're looking at in that livery. Yeah. It's like he's like he's found something that like matters to him. Yeah, and so it's in everyone's best interest, in the interest of the town, that they agree to come to something where Steve doesn't try to lead a lynch mob to kill Hofstetter. Sure. And and so And this leads to a very, very, very uncomfortable moment where he is just hurling these horribly racist terms and stuff. At Hofstadler, and he's and he's and he turns away from him, and he keeps going at him until he's finally like, "You motherfucker!" He says, "You ofe motherfucker." You ofe oh, mother. Yeah. Sorry. It's a, it's a, and it's an older. Yeah, it's like a. Yeah. It's an anagram of foe. Yeah, and it's just like a nickname term for white people. Right. And then that's when Bullock grabs his hand. And shoves and very, it behind him. Unbelievably, because the guy actor who plays Hofstetter sure. is like he's six, he's seven like a, feet. He's like he's like a foot taller than than. <laughs> and then the looks like I'm taking you out of the store. You know. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, come on, dude. He he. I mean, but okay. Well, like Bullock, he's so angry was, he can't see straight. But but also, of course, we're in a certain time period. If he struck, if Bullock, it was, it would be very. But bad. but not even that is like yeah. is like. Um, that Bullock even took him outside was would be charitable for a for a person sure. in that time period because yeah. most because actually in that time period what probably would have happened was Tom Nuttall would have pulled out his gun or something and shot him for saying something like that. You know, you know I, what I mean? I know, it's yeah. like it's like because because he was basically saying something against all white people and so 
I think, and so the people in the bar might have taken it the wrong way, and then the lynch mom might have happened anyway. Yeah. And so, like, it's a tricky situation. They do, take, they do get Bullock to take him outside, and it's like by modern standards, even that is like cringy to watch yeah. and gross, but it's way more appropriate than what could have happened otherwise. I, I feel in like the show. in real life, Deadwood. There would be probably we'd have some surprising non-racist individuals. I mean, General Fields was a real life guy. I'm not certain about Hofstetter in terms of his inspiration, but General Fields is a real life guy and he was a celebrity, and he he was like kind of like Clammy Jane. He he basically was theatrical and we kept getting written up in the newspapers. But I, w- I would say that you can always be but, surprised. I bet there'd be a lot more Steve the Drunks. In exactly. Actual that's that's and what it, I'm saying. And like they might be a lot more, more casual and they might look not look like Steve the Drunk. They yeah. might be like Alma, look like Alma, but be Steve the Drunk. Yeah. And, and so I don't know. I I don't. It'd be insufferable. Yeah. If, if everyone was yeah, I don't, as racist as they. The show would be hung up on that. Or, yeah. Yes, because watch. because then it would be so much so that you couldn't watch the show. Yeah. But it, it's Honestly. admirable compared to other shows because at least it goes there and shows like the the way that yeah, history absolutely. would be cringeworthy for and awful and basically you know yeah it would get, you know it's uncomfortable stuff but it's at least it's dealing with that uncomfortableness it may. Basically, they know. they could have they could have just not addressed it at all and not had any black characters in Deadwood mm-hmm. and just like had skated by and not dealt with it at all and yeah. they decided to try to deal with it whether they did yeah it justice or not is and, yeah I think I think it's the same thing with like sometimes how they treat the Chinese and you're like it's sure. like the show is exactly is still somehow like it's a it's a comedy at times and sometimes yeah. you're, you're not gonna have the gravity of like. How does it feel if you're dealing with like here's a side character for like two scenes? No, like like in the episode where they all put on the the Chinese <laughs> caricature masks yeah. of and then they go out and, murder, and kill a bad guy and murder and yeah yeah they they murder Lee and bad guys yeah, and yeah yeah and all that stuff yeah, and yeah, the San you know it's like cocksuckers. yeah exactly but, it's it's not uh you know it's not exactly progressive but yeah. this but this is the time period we're we're yeah in. I'm always waiting for Deadwood to meet current modern culture like head on where like more people watch Deadwood and then they got really, really angry about it. Yeah. And then like people were like, you know, Deadwood, we got to get rid of Deadwood. <laughs> Let's get out of the camera. But it's, yeah. Cause it's just like, but it's really hard. It's, to. it's hard. And I think it, what it gets around is because it's characterization is so good across the board. Almost yeah. all these people are, seem like real people. And, and so and, they're none and of also them seem like monsters. Yeah. They also yeah. seem like monsters. So it's so it, it makes it, it, it gives it a, um, a pass in a way because it doesn't portray any of these characters as like they're fucking saints or anything. Yeah, it gives a pass because it doesn't give them a pass. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. it doesn't give them a pass in the show. So yeah, yeah. Um, to finish up, uh, the the Steve the drunk and yes. Hofstetter, there's this weird. It becomes this weird dark comedy where dark <laughs> oh my God. Bullock has to get Bullock. He needs to go to the bank to get Alma to give a loan to Hofstetter. And so he then he has to... To give a loan to Steve. To give a loan to Steve. That, so he can pay for the livery, so Steve yeah. can... can Hofstetter can because leave and go to Oregon. already said that Oregon he would go to Oregon. And escape all this shit. Yeah. As, as was his dream, he discussed with Fields. And Fields, all Fields wants to do, he's in the background of some scenes, and he's just like, just sign the fucking document. Yeah. And Hofstetter's too proud, and Steve's too proud. They both... They're both too fucking proud. Ridiculously, and they don't do it. in like a, a very dumb way. They're both like... I don't want to be the loser who has to sign the document first. But in a uh, male, male eighteen uh, hundreds kind of way, of course they yeah, don't yeah. want. They both don't. Their want pride to is too big. Sign the document. Yeah, and so neither of them will submit to the indignity of signing the document first, which would give the livery to to Steve, and then keep Steve from trying to kill Hofstetter. Yeah, and um, so anyway, while Bullock is doing all this, and he's just running around trying to get this paper. Charlie goes up, and we haven't discussed that Charlie is trying to get uh, the right. The, <laughs> and he, he tries to be brief, but he still talks in the Deadwood way. Right. And Bullock is just like, and Bullock's bending over to like talk to him. He's like, just. It's amazing watching the uh, the two over the shoulders uh-huh. because there's like, there's like the Bullock that's the side that's like looking towards him over Charlie's shoulder, where he's like. And then there's the other one where he's like he's stroking his mustache while we're looking at Charlie, yeah, like <laughs> nervously waiting for him to finish. Yeah. And so there's these two bullocks that are happening in this scene 
yeah. with Timothy Oliphant making different choices. Yeah, that are and they're strange. both great choices. They're, good, they're both I didn't great that choices. At all, but it's like, and Charlie is hilarious because he's like, he just goes, he's just trying to work through his plot. Yeah, he's just like, this is what's happened to me, and I guess we should work through it too. Could you like, get to the point a little bit faster, fucking Charlie? And it's just like all it is is, uh, Brian Cox wants to buy Joni Stubbs. Shame. Former brothel, former cooperage, and now <clears throat> it's a uh, a schoolhouse. And she, do you think Martha would mind moving into a new schoolhouse? Yeah, there you go. That's it. That would oh, be yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's he all has you have to, to say. explain all the shit that we've been doing. <laughs> and yeah, he didn't really need to bring up anything else. No. You know, if, if yeah. Needed to be brief. Just if it was like, like oh, sh- oh, a new we're 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 moving her out of an ex brothel. Yeah, she's fine. And he just chides but himself that, after he like walks away muttering. Yeah. Um. But uh, I do. Let's talk about Joni Stubbs just a little bit. Yeah. Uh, um. Joni Stubbs is like approached by Brian Cox. This time she doesn't yell at him. Mm-hmm. I think she says, F- "Fuck off again, though." Or, yeah. But uh, when he when he uh, puts forth the idea, go fuck of the yourself. Yeah. The place. She has this like, like almost like dazed expression throughout mm-hmm. this episode where yeah. she's just like, she's like, I don't know, you know, like yeah. she, she's mm-hmm. like, and she's like, she never says like, you know. This is my independence from this evil monster Cytoliver mm-hmm, who mm-hmm, abducted me when I was mm-hmm, 14. Mm-hmm. Instead, she's like, this school would be, you know, I don't know if the school would be, maybe Mrs. Bullock. It's just really, it's a straight, it's a weird plot where she's not direct. She, she's yeah. trying to figure out how to gain her independence without addressing it directly. Yeah. And, uh... She's going to take Jane. Char- Charlie doesn't understand it either. Yeah. And, and she's it, sitting in the jail cell. Going on. Going and on. we get a rare Charlie expression where he's just like, I got to listen to this. The rest of this. And he cuts on Charlie just like, she like keeps <laughs> going. But like she's going to take Moe's Manual and Jane yeah. to this new schoolhouse that Brian Cox or Jack Grish will build mm-hmm. as a way to b- buy this really great place for this uh, theater, I guess. Even though... Um, Calamity Jane, uh, the camera's like right here in front of her, and Joni is next to her, and they're kind of like staring, and they do the kind of like inside joke yeah. thing of the episode of like, where would the stage even go? I don't know. It doesn't make any sense. It's like, I don't know. Not and our it, line. Yeah, Not our fucking line. Above my damn pay grade. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, um, but they'll keep Moe's on as the on. as the security guard. But I really, I I, I find the Joni Stubbs being like kind of indirect and also looking kind of dazed, weird, a weird choice. But I like the sense that she feels just like Farnham when they bought his hotel. Yeah, and just she feels unmoored when her she's going to get money for and lose this location. I like the sense that she that that the. the the building that she originally got at like the beginning of season two, mm-hmm. right? That is basically vacated by the middle of season two. Yeah. And we're now almost to the middle of season three yeah. is finally going to be something happening other than just some random plot line about, Oh yeah, some schoolhouse moves in here. It's, it's, so, co- it's collected a, dr- a drunk guy who killed his brother <laughs> for $200,000 right, right. and a drunk woman mm-hmm. who's really sad about the fact that wild Bill Hickok got killed and drinking herself. They keep to death. trying to figure out things to do with Joni because she's a great actress. And, and because Sai so, is a cartoon who and, wants to kill her. Yes. Right. And because, Sai just kind of writes himself for being a cartoon character, so you don't really have to do anything with him. Right. Um, and so they keep wanting to try to figure out something to do with Joni. This is just what it seems like to me. Yeah. And so um, they're like, uh, yeah, there's a schoolhouse there now. Uh, yeah, that guy uh, got shot. Uh, yeah, let's just, just send him over there. <laughs> it's like, uh, we don't know what to do with Jane. Just send her over there, too. Yeah. It's like, well, we've got, we got this big empty building. Let's just put people in it. Yeah. And so but it's also really sad. It's like this hole. Yeah. It's like a hole yeah. where the wounded people who have been like crapped on. So right. Much, but like, right. but <laughs> they can't function. <laughs> it really is. It really is. It is this, it's this hole of just of, it's just a shithole filled with shit people that have just been shit on those those all those people are saints oh, oh no 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 they <laughs> are Mo's manual they are saints but they are covered in shit yeah the yeah. people uh, by the way the people literally so yeah the yeah, people the time. people that do the what i'm going to dub the shit work the mm-hmm. people that that put dirt shit and shit and stuff on people yeah. just everybody yeah. everybody in the show oh, yeah. they're 
they're incredible. They're I don't, the best in the business. I don't know. I don't know if they have like they have like a like a pattern. They have like several patterns or something or what they do. But it looks unlike any other thing like that in theater. It's or so film. strange. It's so strange. It looks real. How? No, yeah, yeah. It, it looks just, like they they probably and there was you know the actual set of Deadwood was hosed down so there was actual mud. Everybody looks like so they may have been they're covered mud. in shit yeah. all the time except for like Joni and like. Al and yeah, like like main people that don't want to be covered in shit. Joni's top hat and ribbon from top hat work is again it, incredible. Marvelous. It's incredible. Um, and then I've had, maybe it's this episode I can't remember, but she puts the top hat on in one of these episodes, mm-hmm. and the ribbon falls behind her. Yeah. And it's like oh, it's great. Um, it's a great shot. Really quick, I think we've we've covered almost everything, but I want to go back to the episode. <laughs> we get Captain Turner, who is the the the, the large man who mm-hmm. is is this the second of her the Doherty of and, uh, he comes and meets Doherty. Oh, that's right. Oh, because because earlier, like at the very beginning of the episode, Al is out on his balcony and Hearst is like, "Hello," or whatever he says, and then Al is like, looks at him. Hearst says, then, "I mean, Al says nothing." Al, and one, well, then Dan's like, or no, uh, Johnny. Johnny's like, like well, how "What's he what's what's he going to say to him?" And he's like, well, "I'll say fucking nothing," or whatever he says to him. Oh, good for him. And good for him. And so <laughs> and so he walks inside, and then and then uh, because Hearst. Johnny get, waves. Doesn't get any response. Johnny waves. And then Dan, does he tip his hat? He tips his hat or something well, and then well, goes like, go says, fuck yourself. Hurst he says, says, good morning. <laughs> yeah. Morning. And, and the, yeah, Dan says, morning, best time of day to go fuck yourself. Best time of day to go fuck yourself. And then that's when the captain comes in later yeah. with this fucking em, this envelope we've and, seen twice now. You sense these threatening envelopes which usually leading to murder. Yes. But and, you get the sense that because... Al, Al's on the balcony. He like starts going downstairs as quickly as he can to go meet... The captain. Yeah. And, but you get the sense that because Dan was not as smart as Al, in this mm-hmm. case, it really fucked him up because that's why Hearst sent the letter. That's what my sense was. Like, Hearst sent the letter because Dan was too stupid not to, to, to not engage him. Um, oh, maybe. I mean, that's, I, that's possible. Hearst needed to have this meeting anyway. He needed to have but, a meeting. Yeah. Anyway, but I love I love Captain Turner's explanation for cutting off Al, helping Hearst cut off Al's finger. He was like, just doing my job. Hmm. And Yeah, that was like the first thing he said to him. Yeah. Just and, doing my job, and then, and then uh, he sees Dan. Yeah. What does he say to Dan? Good. Good. Uh, well, he he, he Last just. Not. You don't want to speak like that again to Mister Hurst. And, they, and Dan responded, "Well, I'll, 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 I'll speak, speak to me damn way I want, or whatever." Much. Yeah. It, it, Turner says, "Not only will I change your mind, I'll rip your whole fucking head off." Uh-huh. And then. Uh, Dan I would love to see that from kill. that fucking sea creature. Yeah. That's what I would say just, to that cocksucker. Just the big boys going I, at it. I love Turner's really impassive face and his cool little mustache. Yeah. He just looks like a he looks like a tank who has no feelings. Like he yes. just is like Rrr. with his with his gloves, yeah. his white gloves. Yeah, like like this is just the task of moving over there is just occupying him entirely. <laughs> yeah, he's just like I'm here. Here's a letter. It's gonna threaten to kill you. Yep. Um, let, let's just keep going. Oh, Harry Manning and Tom Metal discuss the fire department. So Harry Manning's running for sheriff because because he said that in his uh, in his speech for sheriff. Yes, he mm. did. He really, which I made fun of him in that episode. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I okay. So I'm I'm at the limit of what I've seen. You mm. you have only seen this far. This and he knows far more than we do. He has the far sight, the prophecy, the green yeah. sight. Uh, yeah, the green of, of Game of Thrones. Of what happens. He has the farscape. Uh, so to yes. me, this this whole fire brigade. Seems like Chekhov's gun. Maybe I'm with Tom Nuttall. Again, we, we've t- discussed all the <laughs> mentions of fire. What? Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, the, 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 there is a bit of a Chekhov's gun situation. It is life. strange that he works at Tom Nuttall's establishment. That who was the fire chief previous? Charlie Utter. Charlie Utter. Charlie Utter yeah. Who said what? You need to put a stovepipe. Or oh, some right. steel you need around. to put some steel around that stovepipe, yeah. yeah. or you're gonna burn this whole fucking camp down. This whole fucking yeah. camp. Every all the buildings are too close together. And who's the one who gave? What's his name? Harry Manning. Harry Manning shit. This episode about a fire brigade. Tom Nuttall. But Tom no, fucking Nuttall. But no, Tom Nuttall is helping him though. He, he is. He's yeah. helping him because he's like. T- t- Harry but Manning, it might be foreshadowing. Harry Manning reveals that he's only t- running for sheriff against Bullock. Because he wants to become the fire chief, which hasn't. There's no position for that yet. Mm. But he thinks if he's. But the originally dep- there was. But he, th- he thinks that there, that's there what's a, so strange. There was a fire safety marshal, mm-hmm. oh, which is basically the same thing. But but it's not. There's a fire not a fire. Tr- 
Not a fire truck, which is Harry Manning's right. dream since he was a child. I think he's mentioned this. Sure. You need he, to have a, a, a fire truck. Wagon. Who the fuck is the fire safety marshal now? Well, that's just... Well, fire safety I guess chief. It's, it's, it's fucking Charlie Utter, man. It is still Charlie But, but hold on. Let's... let's what, when, he, when has he done his fucking job recently? I like that this is, like, probably <laughs> the most heated we've got. <laughs> this is very important. <laughs> About the heat. The real heat. I think that... I think, but Harry Manning wants to become deputy, so he'll better position him to become a fire truck operator when the fire truck operator happens. And Tom Hall is like, "Look, I'll take twenty that's twenty percent, twenty dollars off your paycheck, or twenty percent out mm-hmm. in advance. I'll use that money to build a fire truck, and then we'll sell the town our that's services." That's kind of what happens. Yeah. But it's really aggressive. It's really brave. It's really fucking aggressive. He's just like, "You're a dumbass. You're so stupid." And he's like, why are you running to be a, the fucking sheriff if you want to be in charge of the fire department? I don't know. And he's like, he's like, well, if you were going to fucking do it, why wouldn't you get a fucking fire truck and then just sell your services to the goddamn camp? He's like, well, that sounds like a good idea. And he's like, well, I'm going to give you the fucking money for it. He's like, okay, great. And he's like, great. That's awesome. That's what we're going to do. Great. I think we also see in this episode when uh, Steve the Drunk and Bullock are having heated words. Uh <laughs> Harry Manning gets mentioned by Steve the Drunk. He's like, Steve the Drunk is 100% behind Harry Manning for Sheriff and not Bullock. Because yeah. yeah. Bullock keeps punching him every time yeah. he sees him. And then Harry Manning, when he gets mentioned, he leans back. And I think he, like, moves his shirt back so you can see that he has a gun on his waist belt. So he's like, Harry Manning was about to mix it up with Bullock. But what's interesting is then later is, in the yeah. episode when he brings the, the deed to Steve the Drunk, Mr. Mister the Drunk. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and he's talking. He's he's singing the praises of Bullock and how yeah. great and how great he is until Bullock pops him in the fucking face. He just doesn't want to hear it. It's like he's God, so he just, tired he just, of hearing him. Yeah, it, it's oh God. I mean, he would have gotten that signature if he if he was the type of person who could just swallow his shit, swallow it, and just listen. Just wait for Steve to just fucking. Just run out of steam. Just swallow that sewer water and yeah. just keep fucking going, and he mm. can't do it. Yeah. It's like, and I mean, as most of us could not. No, it's like you hear that fucker good. just talking endlessly, saying the most <laughs> ignorant, stupid fucking shit, and you just want to punch him in the fucking face. Mm-hmm. And Bullock finally does. Well, but it's it, it is inspiring that no one. The bar is much more crowded than no one pays attention to Steve. He's like talking to the entire no, because he's just right. he's just an ignorant an idiot, and everybody knows it. Oh, did we talk about Hurst himself? Well, uh, no, I guess we didn't really. I mean, we talked about. Okay, so he he brings in Tolliver. Oh, he sure. He brings in Swearingen, and uh, he acts like a fucking vampire. He, he has to <laughs> lay against the board with a thing for his back because he's he, he got a back problem. Yeah, and, this is the this is brought up in the first episode he's in. Yeah, and, and um, uh, Swearingen can't can't fucking stand it for very long, and and eventually. Has to leave, and that's and, and, and recruits Adam. This is this is when Silas sur- surrogate. has to come in, yeah. to to be his yeah to be his surrogate. Oh, uh, oh here, here here's something that y'all can help me out with. Uh, yeah, is uh, who were they talking about? That with Adams was going Hawkeye. To- that's okay. who they were talking. Okay, that was who, whose name he was not supposed to. It was complicated. I thought they were talking about Hearst because I was like, you don't want me to mention Hearst, but it was Hawkeye. But who Hawkeye was. They don't like Hawkeye because Hawkeye, they think, is a bad influence on Adams, I think. think. We've discussed this before where Hawkeye is like this guy who gets drunk and gets off the trail. Mm -hmm. He's the guy who uh, was beat up in the first episode of the second season. Oh, I know. I know who Hawkeye is, Mm -hmm. but what the fuck are you talking about? That's who they were talking about? Yes, yes. Here, let's see. I had no fucking idea Uh, who they were talking about. Where the fuck have you been, Silas? I was looking for someone whose name you never told me to say again. Amongst further instructions, including Wait not to second. look for him when he's... Why the fuck were they looking for a Hawkeye two episodes ago or something? Is that right? I don't Dan, know. Yeah, Dan, I, Dan was like, give me Hawkeye. So that they could what? find Adams. That was it? Yeah. yeah. Remember Adams had to take a shit? <laughs> <laughs> and he, 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 he explained to Dan that that was why Alan sent him to look for Hawkeye. <laughs> Ha- Adams and Hawkeye are I best. Totally forgot about they're that. best buddies, and like Hawkeye is like the dude who always gets in trouble, and Adams is a straight shooter with upper management material written all over. Him. And is that Mash? No, it's the Avengers. Oh, Hawkeye. Okay, yeah, yeah. different Hawkeye. Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, but uh, so Adam Al says, Adams, you're going to be my person who talks to to Hearst, yep. and you you are going to look like you're open for uh. Um, 
Like you're able to be uh, against betr- me to betray me. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then Dan sees this from across the way. You hurt my fucking feelings, Hal. <laughs> That's typical Dan. Yeah. Typical Dan, who's soft. very he's very soft. He's a soft boy. He's a you know he's a big. I mean, you can just see it when you look at him. He's a big. He's a big oh, softy. You just yeah. poke him. He's he's, he's like, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. He's like the Pillsbury Doughs boy. Yeah. <laughs> well, well he says. Uh, he says. Uh, he's, like know, a, he's like the Pillsbury Dough boy with a knife. He kind of repeats what Al told him last time. He got really upset for him favoring Adams. He says, you know, you and him haven't been through. Me and him haven't been through what me and you've been through. Not by a long shot. So more than an opinion ain't possible. Still, I'd be fucking surprised if either of us was mistaken about uh, about um, them being together. Hang die, all the time. Yeah, um, yeah. Squidgen. But like, uh, I I don't have a point. Oh. Let's let's move on. Okay. Uh, dude, I think we got the whole episode. That's about it. Yeah. Bullock, I Bullock didn't get the bodies. Yeah, we never got back around to that. Huh. Yeah, didn't didn't come back around. Also, uh, I mean, I guess maybe it'll get picked up next episode. We shall see. But uh, I I kind of thought in this episode it get resolved with uh, Steve and uh, Hostetler, you know, signing the thing. But it just kind of got. Oh, like, that was kind of funny when he was when uh, um, Bullock was sitting in bed mm-hmm. with Martha, and uh, and he was he was kind of talking about it. And then uh, at the very end of it, he was just like, Saul. <laughs> it was like, what's he talking about? No, I think he was saying that Saul <laughs> oh, helped him. Oh, okay. Yeah, Saul yeah, is the yeah. one who, in the background of a so shot, just narrated the idea of having them sign so simultaneously. That's, so that's kind of why he was like, <sighs> that's Saul. Saul. Son of a bitch, oh, did it again. that son of a bitch. And then Martha bitch. is just like super hot for that. She's just like, this is great, Bullock. You know, thank you. <laughs> we need to have sex right now. Yeah. That's what happened in that uh, scene. Diplomacy. Yeah. <laughs> she, she's she's thinking of her dead husband. And she's like, oh my god, why did my? She's first thinking husband of her die? dead husband, who is Josh du- Duhamel. Josh Duhamel. Du- yes. Duhamel. Yeah. The, we need Duhamel. to explain for the viewers. Chaz recently discovered that Josh Duhamel and Timothy Oliphant are the same person. They have, <laughs> they have the same face. They're the same person. Uh, yeah. Uh, and I'm worried that in the uh, movie they're going to replace. Um, Timothy Oliphant in certain scenes to save money, um, mm. and uh, I think that's reasonable. You heard it here first, um, and it's also would be you know improvement. You know, Josh Duhamel is the star of Win a Date with Tana, Tad Hamilton, and Vegas. no, I mean no, I mean just in the moments when he's like making like a sour face, yeah. and they'll be like, and it's like there's a big mustache to hide his face anyway. Yeah, yeah, they'll just those, yeah, yeah, they'll just be like, all right, we're gonna bring in Josh. We paid him. A uh, hundred thousand dollars. Otherwise, we had to pay Timothy Oliphant like a million dollars to stand here. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, and make a sour and face. And if you're watching Josh Duhamel, no dis- mis- disrespect, man. We like you, Josh Duhamel. Oh. No, I know, man. I like you, but like you're no Timothy Oliphant. Yeah. I mean, that's just that's different. Transformers. Just... What were you thinking? Signing on to Transformers. That's shit, man. Shit. Fuck off. Anyway. Well, anyways, Miss Stubbs. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm sauntering out of here. Yeah. I'm, I'm, Charlotte. Oh, my, oh, my, oh, Charlotte out of here. <laughs>